You're listening to the World Famous White Roof Radio with cast number 674, recorded September 22nd, 2021. Tonight brought to you by DetroitTune.com, MotoringStripes.com, and DonBurnside.com. Because, well, I don't have anything clever to say after DonBurnside.com. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's DB in Arizona with a brand new episode of the World Famous White Roof Radio. Talking about, you know, we're going to see tonight, just like we always do. A uh, good friend of joining me tonight as always, Mr. Todd Pearson. Todd, say hi. I am here and we are were, we were doing our annual recording on the uh, autumnal equinox, which we've really, it's been a tradition since 1936 here at White Roof Radio. So for 85 years, we've been recording on the autumnal <laughs> equinox and I've got eggs balanced on my table here with nothing holding them up. And here 30, we are. 36. I remember we were recording in 36, but we were doing it like on a, in a in it, wasn't it? In a, it was our grandparents. We it wasn't us. I mean, I we wasn't. We were recording alive. on a ship at sea, weren't we? <laughs> Out in the South Pacific, going to some tiki bar or something. Man, if I remember after, correctly. and after a gin and tonic, that was pretty good math, wasn't it? It was 85. That was really was, good math. Yeah. Man. I was quick. No bad. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Rain Man over here with the numbers today. Oh, gosh. Here goes Rain Man's. Anyway. We're here talking about uh, – we are going to talk about Mini Cooper stuff, but this actually might turn out to be the gin show. We're going to see how, what happens in the edit bay <laughs> after we're all done because uh, I'm drinking gin. Todd's drinking gin. Chad had a bad week. If you guys follow him on Facebook, you know why. Uh, Gabe's got an early flight tomorrow, so he won't be with us. So uh, just Todd and I. So it's going to be a good time. We've got a listener email. We have listener <laughs> Facebook comments. <laughs> and we have a little bit of news for motoring file and then i think we're going to talk about the why todd pies 1.5 liters of booze and you know what you know here's here's my favorite thing about this week not only the fact that it's today's the first day of fall is that yeah. it's it's uh it's new apple products week mm, it is yes, at least we around were, here we were, talk, we were talking about that too we ordered we ordered two new iphones that will be here in uh less than less than uh, 36 hours 13 Pros by chance? Yes. Yes. We got, nice. We both we, we now have matching. We've turned into the Babishkins. Dude, you, you guys have matching <laughs> stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, one's oh, silver. finally. One's silver and one's gold, but we both got the 512. You're on the same, but you're both on the same. Yes. Map. Yeah. So we used it to be. I would be long enough to do that. It used to be I would get the latest, and then she'd get me the hand-me-downs after I had it for a year or two years yeah. when something else yeah, came you out. Yeah, would, you would pass it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were on the cycles. But we're both now, like, she's got a 10 and I've got a 10S iPhone and um, it's they're like three years old, right? Oh yeah, they're they're Tens like are old. I'm on the I'm even I'm on the eleven. So we've we've skipped three generations. We've skipped the eleven, uh, the twelve, right? Well, we skipped two. Yeah, two, yeah, yeah. Two, two you skipped two anyway. So uh, uh, for what it's worth, we both ordered new iPhones. I'm very excited about that. Nice. Uh, I'm still on the uh, we're on the eleven till next year may ish i pick mid-year why not uh, i'm actually holding out now on a series 7 watch because i'm on a series 2 um that is barely operational at this point i'm surprised that it's lasted this long to be honest but it's been a trooper so yeah i had the series two. We've, we've, we upgraded last year to the to the six in november and there's no reason to go to the seven at this point no not at all there's not much and old. gabe has this gabe has this really good sense of timing to join us <laughs> After we've already started the show. After we've already started talking about Apple products. Like we just started. I know, Gabe. Did you did you order a new iPhone? I'm, I'm sure you did. Which new iPhone did you order this week? Um, I did. I almost didn't. Um, I uh, I ordered the uh, 13 Pro, the new blue color. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking that blue on the, uh, on Apple Watch 7. I when hedged I, my... When that, Becomes available. I hedge my bets because I'm like, if I order the blue one, just my luck, it's going to get delayed and it won't be here till like Thanksgiving. So mm. I went with gold because I, I always put mine in uh, in a case anyway. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, so I've already got the MagSafe case for it. I've already got the mount for the car for it. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm nice. decked out roughly nice. 36 hours from now or less. We'll be rocking the new... Uh, the new iPhones, because Gabe, I, I was just telling DB, I'm I'm still on a 10s, so I'm like three years behind everybody else. I'm like a like a farmer. Gosh, I'm not um, even on a 10s. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the I'm doing the the annual. I'm just I, I'm just like ah, I was I was like oh, finally I'm not going to do it. But with the you know the whole iPhone uh, rent an iPhone plan basically whatever whatever you right. call it, the Apple does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
there was such like, incredible ah, deals ah. going on right now. I got like eight, literally, so I, just, I got eight hundred dollars yeah. back from AT and T. Eight hundred dollars off. Really? I know, I didn't yeah. do that. For, for two I probably phones? should have, but I didn't. Yep, I, didn't I got do that. Eight, each, each phone DB. I get eight hundred dollars off on each phone. Dude, yeah, that's pretty smoking deals. And that's, that's just for just smoking uh, deals. I just did the Apple. Um, Apple. I, that's what I do. I just go back. To, yeah. I send it back to Apple and let them give me whatever they're going to give me for it. Well, that's what it was this time. But it was a combination of I send that back to Apple and then AT and T gives me eight hundred dollars in bill credits over the next thirty six wow. months. Wow, that's so, impressive. Yeah, no, eight hundred dollars is a lot of money. There's some really good deals. So that makes the phone like six hundred bucks over yeah. over thirty six payments. So nice, 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 nice. No, I'm I'm just holding out on a watch, which isn't going to be available until Thanksgiving anyway. Um, yeah, and that's, I was going to get the watch, but um, yeah, but I'm on a series two, so oh, dude, you should get the watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on series four. Like, yeah, I, oh, I, I yeah, me. you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I replaced it. Uh, I did the old something's wrong with my battery, like the day before the, you know, my uh, warranty expired. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> sure, shit, there was something wrong with my battery. <laughs> or no, there's something wrong with my Bluetooth. And so they replaced it. Um, well, that's good. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, we're done talking about no, Apple stuff now. It's, yeah. Oh, we, we're going to move on. So we're going to talk about Mini Cooper stuff. Before we get started with Mini Cooper stuff and motoring file news is let's do first. Um, I did a quick creep stock over on the Facebook page just for you guys to know. And somebody mentioned that you weren't going to monitor that anymore or put stuff on Facebook. We are still going to put stuff on Facebook because I understand a lot of you are on Facebook. And that's like your trigger to go, oh, here's a new episode of White Roof Radio. I have to go download it. Yeah, Facebook's my trigger too. (laughs) (laughs) Facebook's my trigger too, but not for that. Anyway, um, and and so somebody left a comment. It's like, oh, I thought we weren't going to, you know, you weren't going to do anything. It's like, no, we're still going to put content on Facebook. We're just not going to monitor it. So I'm letting you guys know that, yes, we are monitoring to make sure that you know that we're not monitoring. So I can go in there and say, hey, by the way, we're not monitoring. Yeah. And that was literally the last time I checked it was like two weeks ago. Well, so don't do not do that anymore. Yeah. If you post there, it's going to be three, five days a week maybe before we see it or, mon- you know, or be able to respond yeah, exactly. to it. So don't expect to interact with us on Facebook. It's still going to get posted Correct. over there as cranky yep. as we are about it. Um, it does help kind of, you know, people see it. Gabe and I have the We Hate Facebook podcast in active development right now. <laughs> you just guys don't know about it yet. So anyway, so there's that. And then also uh, John M., our good pal in Philly. Thanks for leaving a comment before listening to the show. <laughs> uh, it's only good fun. I kill me. It was only good fun. I kill me. It was really funny for those of you who are wondering about the last episode, which we actually – uh, titled that you know what makes the f56 the best mini ever and we got a couple of comments on that and i know the comments that we got were based on people just commenting on the title not on the actual contents of the episode well, if you haven't listened i got there's say, a prereq you need to actually go listen and i gotta say i think his comment was based on five episodes ago it was yes. the r5053 <laughs> is the greatest mini ever built and he goes how in five episodes did you get from here to here <laughs> my response was DB bought an F56. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pretty much how it works, man. Do you guys, can you guys and 18, well, by the way? Yeah, we can hear you now. Gabe, you sound great. Great. And, and 18 months passed. Um, 2020, 2021. This has been crappy years. So, yeah, I mean, I can change my mind. I'm, I'm, that's, that's like kind of what I, what I do. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what, though? I think that's, that's the mark of an intelligent human being to be able to like just straight up pivot into a new perspective. With yes. new data, you know? It's yeah. Like, you know, what are you going to do? That's that's exactly it. Um, and if you haven't listened to the last show, it's for one reason you've jumped from whatever and you just landed on episode 674. Please make a point to go back and listen to 673. It was actually a really good show. We talked about the uh, how awesome the engines in the F cars are, the B48 and the B38. Um, it's a really, really good episode. You should go check it out, please. Thank you. Um, which we're going to talk more about. Sort of. We have an email from Andrew P. He sent in a mini convertible question. We're going to talk about that. And since we have Gabe, we're going to go and start. Let him go. And we're going to let Gabe talk wax poetic about his 2021 mini JCW Countryman that he's put 10,000 miles on. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Gabe, do you, do you love it or do you hate it? I, uh, well, so, you know, I think it's interesting because I've had I've had a number of folks ask me, you know, just various questions around like, okay, so I know you've, you've got a, you know, a fairly healthy session with cars. 
Like, where does this actually rank? Like, what are we looking at? And I think, oh, that's that's a good question. That's you know, fair. Like I, I think it. I think what's interesting to me is because that that's an interesting way to look at it. Like, it, it, it the the countryman JCW is kind of a, it's it's a new breed of of like hot hatches in a way. You know, it's like obviously it's thirty seven hundred pounds. It's not the twenty seven hundred pound Golf GTI from fifteen years ago. It's or it's almost the same size as the ago. Chevy. It's almost the same size as the Chevy Equinox in my garage. How are you calling it a hot hatch? I'm very curious. Keep going. There are no hatches anymore except for the Mini. So they're all dead. So the Golf, the four-door Golf, for instance, is the same size as the Countryman. No, that's true. Yeah. It's just shorter, you know? Like so, so in a sense, like, if you're looking at hatches and take away the Mini for a second, in the United States, there's not a lot smaller. It's I all the com. It's all the compact SUVs because they all have. Yeah, I mean the only thing le- only thing left is the Hyundai Veloster, pretty much, and then. But it's the same size though, wi- uh, lengthwise. Yeah, if I recall correctly, or, or it's damn it's near cl- close. It's so close. But it's, it's narrow. Is, and I mean, the Veloster ends is actually a really good car. But my my point is like you know it's it it kind of like it's this it's this new concept that you have to wrap your head around. I mean, it's a three hundred and six horsepower. All wheel drive, kind of four door hatch. And if you just think about it in those terms, like, okay, interesting. Oh, like that's okay. Okay, that sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. It's got it's got one of the best infotainment systems in there because it also it's it's pre the um uh, redesign for, for twenty one. <laughs> you know, Gabe, lately, and right? as much as people want to call me out for saying that the new cars are better than the old cars, I think it's very interesting that you're making a statement such as as a really good infotainment system because the last time we actually spoke at depth about the mini infotainment system, you hated it. You, in fact, you used to hate Apple CarPlay in general. Oh yeah, um, all implementations. You just thought it was rubbish, and I oh, don't yeah, yeah, see a I difference between now and five years ago. It was. Yeah, I called so, it beta. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was. Yeah. It, right, it has enough. it has think, grown up a lot, and I think the mini infotainment yeah. system also, along with CarPlay, has grown up and become a, more useful and less clunky and totally. less. Um, they they I think have learned not to put all this extra crap in there. Some of the extra crap is still there, but you don't have to wade through it to get to the useful stuff. If that mm-hmm. if right. that makes any sense, if you have this car, you understand well, what so, I'm talking about. Let's come yeah, yeah. back to that in a second. If you yeah, we can come back to that. I, yeah, actually, sorry, that's I, a really good point. Yeah. That's my fault no, no, for getting no. us off track. I, sorry. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's good because I, I want to. You bring up a good point. I want to touch on that with some time. But I mean, I, I think where where I'm going here is that this is absolutely a phenomenal daily driver, like full stop. And and Todd, you're about to get one, so yeah, I think I think you're going to feel the same way. I mean, is it you know is it does it feel like an R53? No, of course not. And that's that's the point. Um, is it enjoyable to drive? Is it fast? Is the transmission uh, generally responsive? Are the brakes amazing? All those things. Like the brakes are better than than my one M. I've said this numerous times. Yeah, the yeah, brakes yeah. are amazing in this car. Um, it it is it is really quick in the mid range, like really quick. So on ramps are no problem. Like you can you can pop it from you know twenty five to seventy five like that. Um, yep. The shifts. When you're in, in whether you're in manual or not, when the car knows you're just giving it, giving it everything, like it snaps those things off, damn near as quick as the, the some of the fastest DCTs. Like it's fast. Now, does the transmission get confused in low low speed maneuvers? Sometimes, yeah, every once in a while, okay. um, it's not always the most responsive. Uh, there are moments when there's a lag, but it's pretty pretty good. Mm-hmm. And so you know, you end up with this this car that like. God, it kind of does it all. The only the only problem with this car um, is the fact that the club didn't exist. <laughs> you know, like that's honestly that's the yeah. problem. Well, because and, and between that, you the- could make the case the Clubman is the better version of the Countryman. Now, I do I do think the Countryman is better in a couple of ways, but I'll talk about it in a second. Yeah, and and I'll also say one of the things that makes this. You know, one of the greatest minis ever. And it's what the Clubman beats it by a tenth of a second. It's at zero to 60 time. Now, not that that means anything to some people, but zero to 60, it's faster than the GP3. So is the Clubman. Uh, and so they've actually take take minis numbers with a grain of salt. The Clubman is at 4.6 on 
like in reality. And many's told me that like they, they see 4.6s. Well, 4.5 club and JCW. A 4.5, I think is what motor trend did. And it's kind of the, the, of for the countrymen in zero to 60 and the club and the clubman went down to like 4.4. Four. Yep, that's where I was going. So they see four point six, and and they saw the countryman at four point, I think eight. Yeah. And then, like you said, Motor Trend even got it further. So Motor Trend is notorious for ba- if you ever like come across a press car that Motor Trend had, just run away <laughs> as far away as you can. Because, uh, God bless them. If you want the fastest times, they're going to get them. But they do dirty things to those cars to get those times. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. But, that's okay. But, you know, I think I think here's the deal. Like, it's 184 pounds, I think, the difference. Um, all that weight's up. Not all of it, but all that weight's up high. Um, I mean, if you're an absolute, like, lunatic like I am, like, that does matter in a way. But not that much, honestly. You know what's great about the Countryman? The hatch. And I hate saying it because the barn doors are cool. But the hatch is really – there's a reason why there's no barn doors anywhere. They're all hatches now. Because it's way more convenient. Because it's better. Yeah, it's better. And it's the, a power the, hatch the, on top of it, too, for the lazy people. power hatch. Oh, <laughs> is it? Yeah, yeah. The, that is, the Clubman. That is such a nice feature on the on the Equinox. Yeah. Um, it just it, – it I can open it from the inside. I can close it from yeah. the inside. I can push well, a the, button from the outside. It says it's nice. And, the, and that's the thing. It's like the, the Clubman, you can't do that because the way the, – the, the doors the, the Clubman, doors, the rear yeah. doors are, are dramatically more expensive to engineer and produce, I'm sure. Sure. But there's no functionality like the Countryman. Also, the configuration inside, the Clubman actually has a little bit more front room for passengers, a little bit less rear room. And it also doesn't have the maneuverable seats in the back. So the seats in the, in the Countryman, if you get the – I think it's not standard. I think it, you have to get a specific package. I think it's the storage package. I don't know what they call it these days. Um, but they move fore and aft, and the seats go from re- totally like reclined all the way up to like 90 degrees. And so with that combination, you can actually increase the size of the of the boot a fair amount. Like you could fit an entire roller nice. bag. I do this all the time in between the seat back and where the partial shelf is. Like wow. that's how much space you can gain. That's so if you're really crunched and you're going to a short distance, you got a ton of luggage, you can actually make people sit upright, but you can maximize the trunk if you wow, want. Wow, very um, cool. Clubman can't do that. So there's a bunch of little tips and tricks with the countrymen that I think make it the better daily uh, for you know 90% of the people out there. Um, if I was paying my own money, I'd probably get a Clubman. If I was using my own money, I'd get a Clubman JCW because there'll never be another one. Like I might as well spend some, you know, a few quality years with that thing because it's not coming back. I mean, right. nobody wants to buy a wagon, sadly. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm well, right there with right. you, Gabe, because uh, I already have a Countryman in the garage. It's it's just not made in, you know, by many. Same. Yeah, same concept. <laughs> so, but same concept. So, I would definitely get the Clubman. That uh, I would, I would almost got a Clubman. In fact, it just. That just, car just makes more sense for me with the bike rack on the roof. would be perfect. And Gabe, can I say, is, has Mini changed this lately, or has it always been this way? And I just haven't been paying attention because I was not in the in the Countryman family. Has it always been called a sport activity vehicle? Because I know that's how yeah. BMW refers yes. to all their SUVs. It's, they're not SUVs; they're SAVs. And yeah, they've, uh, yeah. they've always done that. That's what it's termed yeah. as: is a sport activity vehicle. And uh, it's, yeah. It's a little. I think it's confusing you know, in the BMW thing. I know. I think it's confusing in the marketplace to people because you look at it and yep. you're like, "No, that's an SUV. It's the same size as pretty much as a, a, a like a Honda CRV. It's a little bit smaller than a CRV, but for the most part, people consider that an SUV. Which sadly, sure. they yeah. consider a Kia Soul an SUV also, which it absolutely is more of a wagon. I would say the Kia mm-hmm. Soul is more in the family of a clubman than it is a countryman. Except that it sits a little bit higher, but anyway. Yeah, but that's then you have, the point. but then you have the new Hyundai Kona, for example, and, and that's, that's really small. It's also really small, mm-hmm. but it's bigger. It's bigger than the Kia. I mean, so, yeah. and, but it's not as big as the Equinox or the Countryman. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a slot in there, Gabe, and, and you can talk about the future where Mini's going to. Is that they're that they're thinking about making a smaller the Clubman will go away, and then something smaller than the Countryman will fit in there. Is that right? Well. Yeah, I mean, there, they, what, what it, what it, the, the rumors point to right now is, is that there's, there's a smaller, likely electric Chinese-made crossover. So, and then, then there's actually a larger SUV, right? 
that's actually larger than the Countryman that's coming as well. I don't know if we're going to get that smaller SUV, um, but kind, I do believe that's in the cards. Kind of like they're taking the, the four-door and the Clubman, and they're kind of smashing them together into something else. If you will. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think, I think that you're, you know, I think the reality is that SUVs sell, and so you're not going to have... I don't think you're going to see a club in. I think you may see, you'll likely see a four door mm-hmm. mini in the future, but uh, you know, it's they're they're going to put the money into that into that SUV or into the you know whatever the crossovers are. Well, anyway, I want to think back to yeah. I want I don't want to get you distracted on talking about the Countryman. I want to hear more about it because I've got one coming in uh, about eight weeks. Yeah. So back so back to the Countryman. So I think there are a couple of things that are interesting. So I think I think for one, I, you know, just having had this um this convertible this cooper s convertible 21 um in the garage you know it's got a that new passive system so it's a it's an electric damping system versus the mechanical one Mm -hmm. that we've seen in all the cars um db do you have adaptive dampers on yours dude super legera no of course not What's I have that? nothing. What? And and, and the other thing I don't have, because you keep saying speakers, yeah, my car doesn't have that either. <laughs> okay, there it is. So, but I guess my, my point is that um, it's interesting because the, the Countryman has the older system that's actually more complex. It's it's mechanical, so it actually changes, like, you know, the shock, like, rebound, whereas mm-hmm. the, the, the new one has a, a, a dampening valve, which is it's, which is different. Um you know, it does feel to age. I think the new system, it allows for a tiny bit more body roll, I swear. But Mini says it actually is more comfortable in comfort and stiffer in sport. Whereas the Countryman, I think, could really use that. When I think about, like, what it does, um, what I need from it, like, you know, that is that is a nice, it is a nice add. Like, you know, you want to eat miles up with this thing. And it would be great if the comfort was slightly more comfortable and the sport was slightly sportier. Well, I, I want the yeah. throttle mapping to be, yeah, okay, to I be get more, you. you know, to be more, um, uh, you know, just like l- less lax, you know, I want to be more aggressive. And of course my biggest like thing I've been talking about since the moment I drove an F56 in 2013 is I want that thing to rev quicker. More, you know, more rev, I want yeah, more yeah, yeah. Power in the top end, and then that just that engine just doesn't have it. But all in, man, I love the car. Ten thousand miles. Um, I've had a couple, one software issue um, that that has fixed itself. It's otherwise been totally perfect. I mean, it's it's a nice. new Mini, which are generally very reliable. Um, MPG is in the in the I'd say high twenties these days. A lot of city driving. That's pretty um, good. But it's it's great, man. Th- Three hundred six horsepower. 16 inch you know front rotors beautiful you know, you know it's, it's fantastic it's amazing when you talk about the suspension gabe because i opted to drop the adaptive suspension and get the sport suspension and mainly that's because um really at, at some point well i have ulterior you motives guys, you guys got smooth roads down there? i got no i have ulti- well <laughs> you know me no. dude have like you, you seen you, feel like you gotta be better than they are here you see yeah they are a little bit in fact where i live specifically uh, we have really, really, really ridiculously high property taxes, and they pay for really good roads. So we have fantastic roads locally <laughs> here, like in the immediate vicinity. But if you leave my city, <laughs> no, not so much. <laughs> but I have ulterior motives, and you guys will see that in about eight to ten weeks. Uh, well, yeah, because the, the other complaint, you, like, is there a dr- yeah. is there a drop coming? Yes, or is there, is yes, there a rise coming? very much, very much a very much a drop, and um, it's it's going to take care of one of the issues you yeah, had awesome. about about roll and uh, and handling. So, <laughs> well, and I mean that's a thing, Todd. Like you start to you drop that thing a little bit, and I mean it starts to actually look like a like a hat, right? You know, like right. it's not right. far off from that now. But right, right. I, to sum it up, I mean, you know, here's the deal: these cars aren't cheap. They're fifty k all all loaded, like this one is. Yeah. Sure. Um, you know, th- there's a lot of the marketplace for less that gives you similar power, but I don't, you when I think about the amount of engineering that went into this car to not just make it go fast and straight line, but to make it actually handle and reward the driver, it, it, it shows like the whole thing, the whole package, you know, for one of the first times, like everything, interior quality, interior experience, performance, straight line performance. How could you say this about a mini? I mean, you could never say this about a mini. Right. It checks every box, and and on top of that, it's been totally faultless. Well, there so you go. I'm I'm a big fan. I mean, it's like I said, I I, I love me a clubman, but man, this thing's great. So the full write ups over at motoringfile.com. Uh, there's a link in the show notes, the show description on your app. There, just go shoot, 
Click right over. You get read all of Gabe's words. All of the words. All of the words and the pretty pictures. And, I, and you should just follow Motoring File on Instagram anyway. That way you see all the pretty pictures when you post them. Well, and I'm looking forward to it too because you're going to get my take on it over the next three years. Um, as I've got one rolling in here. It just went into nice. production this past week. I sent you guys oh, that's right, did, yeah. the link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's about two, two and a half weeks, I hope, of production. Then in a month, you know, it'll be on the boat at the port, you know. So I'm I'm thinking by Thanksgiving time, at least by the first of December, I should be rolling in a, a new junk. You may be surprised. It may be Might before. Be I mean, hey, the, yeah the the Oxford uh, that I'm associated with is uh, it came quick, like Did shockingly it? quick. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Like interesting. I mean, it was a month. I'm trying to think. From production date to 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 you know the dealer was probably thirty days. Wow. Okay. Wow, that's not bad at all. All right. So I may be looking by Halloween then. Adds up. Yeah, just adds up. Right, crossing not, all not the not things. Promise. <laughs> yeah, crossing all the things. I'll take it when I and can then, get it. And when you guys are done driving, uh, you can click over. To, I don't know anywhere where you get your finer news. We prefer motoring file, of course. Click over to motoring file. Find this video over at Motoring File, and it oh, is Lord. the John Whitmore Trophy, the full race. It's on YouTube. If you have a smart TV, just just go and thumbs up it on YouTube so you can get it on your app on your TV and just go and spend the hour and watch some of the most joyful racing you'll ever watch in your entire life. It is a whole racetrack full of classics. It's full throttle racing the entire time, and there's a driver change. I have, I'm like half. I'm like quarter way through. It's so exciting. And those classic minis. Yeah, no, those no. dudes are fearless. They appear like just <sighs> balls out fearless. They're, they're they're racing at full throttle. They have to be at full throttle the whole time. They the, they, oh, they drift through every corner. Yeah, it's just, that's a, that's the crazy. They thing float. About those cars. It's the craziest yeah, thing the way they handle. They've got the they've got 60s spec tires like in terms of the width. Yeah. So and that's how the 60s cars used to be. Like you would drift through corners because you only had like. Uh, you know, 195 millimeters of, of tire if, if that versus like 325s or whatever they have on, you know, right. race cars. And so you, you end up with, uh, you know, sort of making that part of your style. Like it's part of what you're doing in a corner is from A to B includes a massive drift, whether you like it or not. And, and did you just, see that if you got to the point where you see that one guy get tapped in the chicane yes. and do basically from a 90 degree yeah. straight drift like it's yeah. the most insane thing i've ever seen and he full full recover and he gets back in and yeah. there's like five spots on the race you need yep. to watch this i'm i've only watched a little bit because i was watching it on my computer i'm actually going to put it over on the 75 and watch it over there uh later on in the week so it's just it's just this is why we have these cars this is why we're mm. car people is this videos like this Right. Like I said, grab it's, your favorite drink and sit grab down. your favorite drink. Put up, put it on a Chill, big screen man. though. Don't watch it on your phone. Yeah. Enjoy it. Put some big sound on too. It's 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 got, yeah, it's all, it's got good, it's got good sound. sound. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's it amazing. Get the Dolby go. Check go. It out. <laughs> go check it. Out. I'm gonna I'll make sure to link both these up in the in the show notes. I'll link there directly to this YouTube thing too, just so you guys know where it's at. One one thing I, I actually just I'm almost finished with it. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna get it done this week, likely. But um, is the uh, Cooper S, the, the 2021 Cooper S convertible review that I'm doing. Mm. Um, and I'll give you the highlights. The highlight is zesty yellow. It looks great in pictures. Tough, yeah. tough to rock, you know, yeah. on a daily yeah. basis. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like driving around an unripe banana. It, well, <laughs> right. And people it's look like, at that. That color people is so rough, dude. It is. They kind of give yeah, you I that love, that look like an RCA like, Victor like really, dog, you, you know? It's, it's like, that, like you, paid, like like you paid for that? I like that it exists. I would not like it if it was my daily. I know, and I, I like but, it if for like in short in short doses. But you're right; people look at it with that kind of like head tilt, like a dog. Here's something. It's like what? Like I'm yeah. not sure so about that. I will say, besides the color, because the colors, you know, obviously not, right. not we're not reviewing the color necessarily, but the car itself, like you know, it, it's fantastic. The big um, the big news is the the suspension change, which I said is I I think really successful thus far. Um, the front lights are different. So your fogs are gone. Now they're integrated. Didn't right. have fog. Couldn't test it. Interior, uh, is slightly redesigned. And then there's the, there's the infotainment system, which it's not like it's terrible, but they took a system that was easy to use and they made it harder to use. They made the, the home and I, you called it Todd a while back. They made the main screen, basically this sort of linear, 
uh, interaction pattern where you have to go from app to app to app to app to app to get to an app right. versus having them all on a screen at once. So you can just tap. And even if it was a circular design before and it wasn't quite like an iPhone, it still was similar because you saw the apps. Right. And you could kind of work it, you know, work it quickly. And I know there's, you know, there's controls and then there's, there's button, um, you know, shortcuts, et cetera, but not for everything. And it's, it just doesn't make any sense. Like it seems like an enormous amount of work to, to put a product back in terms of consumer satisfaction. And I get the widget thing, like, okay, we can show some, like on the weather, instead of having just a dumb, like little button for the weather, you see the actual temperature. Right. But other than that, like, I mean, there's, you know, it just seems, seems like it, it, it conceptually makes sense, but in practice, Every single day, flipping through these apps, it, it it's trying. Well, and I don't know, yeah. you, I don't know about you, Gabe, but I drive around all the time. My CarPlay is on the screen. I never have, mm-hmm. I, I never have the the mini menus on the screen where you go to home unless so something else is up. Like I need, I want to know my tire. You know what the most annoying, else. the most annoying part of this whole thing is that it takes like an extra click to get to CarPlay. Yeah, you have to go all the oh. way down. There. You have to like swipe around to find it, and it's not. Oh. And there's no obvious like carplay button like mm-hmm. there is in the current minutes when it when it oh, that's, locks that's in. that's annoying because even in the equinox as soon as i plug in it's just like oh here's carplay it's well, just the, it, i just have to plug in and if it's the, the latest case, thing you I might doing. have to do like a one touch thing so it, it, yeah. Launch CarPlay. yeah and i should i should preface this by saying it should come up automatically it's wireless of course so you just walk in the vehicle turn it on and it should come up automatically right, right. there are moments in these cars still even though they're i think they're very good that it doesn't come out of, up automatically. For some, right. And it's probably user error. You're probably just like clicking around and you clicked off of it unknowingly yeah. as a car starting. But that's where it's annoying. Which is the, Don't do that. It's interesting, Gabe, that you're talking about the, the convertible, the, the Cooper S convertible, the new F57. The It's a 21 or a 22 that you're reviewing there? 21. Uh, 22. 22. Sorry about oh, that. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Uh, it kind of segues into our, our listener question because he was kind of like wanting to know, he's in the market for a, a convertible, and was, you know, kind of tossing back and forth between an R57 and an F57. And my attitude is that's not even a question. Um, you could, well, I, I, mm-hmm. I find the question to be slightly legitimate, but keep going, Todd. Yeah, I, I think you go with Well, it. if you're looking for a classic car, the R57 is great. Yeah. Yeah. So this choice. email was from Andrew in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. Thanks so much, Andrew, for emailing us in. Oh, not R57. And so, so his, so his question is, as Todd mentioned, he's, ta- he's looking for a convertible. He will get an R57 convertible S. Which is the, or, which is the previous generation. That, previous generation. Yeah. Or that, an R57. F57. Yeah, no. Yeah, or he wants an F57, but he wants a Cooper with a manual in the new convertible. Right. And oh, right? New that's what it boils down to. And I think it's going to be very hard to... Uh, I have nothing against that. If you're going to get a convertible and you're doing commuter driving, a, a Cooper is completely adequate. But your problem is, is when you're you're going to be looking for a new one, you're not going to find it. Um, yeah. It's mm-hmm. unless you order that specifically, you will not find a Cooper convertible probably anywhere in the with, U.S. But, with but a, why, but with why an uh, with a manual that? transmission, that's your right. qualifier. So, so you're looking for like what I did. He's looking for a unicorn. So, Andrew, what you're going to have to do is really open up your your search for that car and just hope you can find something. Well, Wait, man, before we move on, was did he say that he had to have it like in a certain time? No, he is didn't give any reason why no. you can't. So, Andrew, order order your car. That's Go, yeah. Just, that's just if you're getting new, just order it. That's yeah. the thing because and, and, yeah, you're not going to get a Cooper in a manual transmission because most of the enthusiasts are the ones who are ordering the manual transmissions and they're going for the S or a JCW. So that, right. that's why so it's going to be hard to find. Yeah, no, I, and I, I totally agree. I think what's interesting is I was actually talking to some folks at Mini today, and they were mentioning that one of the, the byproduct of not having cars on lots is that 30 to 40% of people now order them. Oh, so just like just like it used to be. <laughs> that's at numbers, exactly. Those numbers are similar to what they were 15 years ago. Yeah. and Which is awesome in a lot of ways um, for a lot of reasons. I mean, number one, dealers don't have to stock so much. You've right. got, um, well, you know, people are getting what they want, and they're typically longer term customers when they get what they want. the The downside is I can't walk into a dealer and see options and sort of right. get a feel for what I want. Well, the downside, right. Gabe, the is, other, yeah, I, I think another downside that nobody thinks about in this situation is it's not how everybody 
buys new cars because a lot of right. people, right. I think Americans, there's yeah, yeah. a good percentage of people right. in the market for a new car are in the market for a new car because one, theirs is in the shop over there, you know, blown up and they're like, I need a new car today. Or somebody wrecked into them and it totaled their car and they're like, yeah. I got to have something now. I don't have eight weeks to wait. I don't right. have 12 weeks or yeah, whatever. And, I think, and those are, those are viable. I think, I think there's a lot of folks who just have the, you know, I want it now sort of mentality, which, you know, right. hey, more power to you. But like, I think, I think if you, if, if you have that attitude, I think you're way better served by just sort of like thinking about, okay, if I could spend 40 days waiting, I could get exactly what I want. I could design the car how I want it and have it be very specific. Um, and it's mine. And with the other byproduct of this, that, that many mentioned is, you know, the take rates we've always seen take rates uh you know for certain colors etc are very low well a lot of that's because dealers just order the cars right so dealers are ordering cars that are safe to sell that means they're not going to order the cool green color because they're not sure if it's going to sell whereas we are all like the green color is the best you know or, or whatever or they're not going to order manuals they're not going to order there's there's a lot of things they're not going to order that we may not we may be interested in but they're just afraid they're going to sort of like muck up a sales opportunity. Yeah. And so what incidentally based on this whole thing, what we're actually potentially getting is a view of real take rates, like an actual, if you look at the people oh, yeah. ordering cars, what are they ordering? Right. That's, that's a pretty interesting data point, you know, because before we were just looking at what dealers were ordering. Yeah. I think it's sure. going to turn, I think it's going to turn the kind of information they had before on its head, Gabe, um, because I know I looked at, at my dealer and I just, you know, know this from insider information was that of, of like 20 some, I'm going to say 22, 23 cars on order or something like that. Um, more than half of them are JCWs. Mm. And that is just, that no. blows my mind. I mean, we're talking more than a dozen JCWs on order with all of these. And that kind of like goes, oh, well... People are willing to one spend the money because money's cheap right now. Um, but if you're if you're gonna wait, you're like go all in, get get exactly what you want. Don't settle for what's on the lot because you're gonna end up with a car you don't like the color. You're gonna end up with a car you don't. You'd rather have a Cooper S or you'd rather have a JCW. And so I think those take rates are gonna kind of get blown up and shaken up a bit. And I don't think we'll ever know unless we talk to some you know people behind the scenes what that's going to be but we'll see mm-hmm. eventually the ones on the road i see the ones getting delivered i'm at my dealer four or five days a week i see what's being delivered and it's start it's starting to skew towards more of the the higher end of these cars people aren't afraid to spend 50 grand on a mini i mean i just did it myself and it's insanity i mean what else yeah. i could get for that although anymore not much <laughs> yeah, I was gonna not say, much, anymore actually. not much <laughs> no, no so let's get back to andrew's question really quick so basically he boiled down to the fact that he wants to get a convertible he came from a 330d he's rocking the mommy the mommy van right now um as his daily driver for commute duties because he has to carry a kid so we can't get an r52 because r52 backseat doesn't hold a kid very well i don't know if i'd put a kid in r52 anyway so we move ahead between r57 and an f57 and really, at this point, it comes down to appearance and how much you actually, how much of a reliable automobile you actually want. If you want a car that, in my opinion, looks better with the top up and down, and you're really that's a big deal to you, you're going to end up getting the R. Because uh, I personally, I think the F56 convertible looks like trash. I don't think it looks good with top up. I don't think it looks good with top down. Good. I like it. I like the. I like the latest. Uh, I, that's on the convertible only like with the hard top it looks fine but when they did the convertible top it doesn't like with the r52 and the r57 i thought those cars looked exactly like their hard top counterpart counterparts with the top up and then the top down it's like oh that looks really kind of cool well and i think with on the f car with the top down it accentuates how hideous the front end is well, and here's the other thing too: is he's looking for something that's reliable, and I think. But he's looking for reliable, right? And so, I think the problem is, is you, uh, we, uh, even if you get an N18 engine, which is what I've got in my Roadster sitting in my garage right now, my, 20, yeah, my 2013, my um, 
which is what he would absolutely do is pick yeah. you know, one of the later generations. Uh, yeah. Post post 2013. I think you're still right. You're still driving around. And I hate to say this. I got a, time bomb. a ticking time bomb. Uh, you really are that something really are. And, and as far as maintenance goes, and I don't mean it's going to be catastrophic or tragic. I'm not talking like a whole turbo, but the car is definitely going to have more maintenance. And if you buy a new, like Gabe said, if you order one, even you're going to have one warranty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These cars are bulletproof. I've been driving yeah. the F generation since uh, um, early 2016. They really are, for me, my personal uh, experience. And from what I've seen at the dealer, the dealers are empty. The service departments are struggling because there's not as much going wrong with these cars. I'm not saying right. they're perfect, but they are as close yeah. to it as many has gotten yet. Yep. I'm with Todd. I, I would say go with the F car uh, just because... I hate bashing the R56 Gen, but right. really, I'm not going to. Oh my god, I'm not going to bash it. But you're talking about a car that's what six years old. It's, yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when the fuel pump fails, or the other fuel pump fails, or mm-hmm. your thermostat goes out, or your thermostat goes out again, or 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 the window delaminates from the top. And like he said, he he's commuting. And I, he I have experience with that. This right. has happened to me. It happened to me twice. Right. On a hundred thousand mile car, so uh, for somebody that doesn't want to get stranded, I, I yeah, would say I'd go with the F car. Go with the brand new one, even if you find and one you, that's a couple you years can't old. Get in that really cool green, yeah, and neat. and that crazy yellow. Yeah. He was he was talking about going between the Cooper and the Cooper S. If you order it, go ahead and order the Cooper. Get what you want. Get the manual Cooper. Absolutely. Be happy. Save yourself a couple of grand. But yeah. for the for the difference, I wish you could drive them back to back. And you'd probably be sold on the S, and that's just from my experience driving these cars back. Yeah. To back. I mean, it's it's. True. That's why I went with the S. You know, As I test so drove, uh, I had a, a loaner, um, a Cooper loaner with a manual transmission, after the roasters in the shop, and it was. And we talked a little bit about this with the last show, but it, it wasn't. It didn't have that. Mm, it was it fine. The, it was fine. It was, <laughs> yes, it was fine. Mm, that's it. It was fine. Yeah, because he's coming from a 335D, so he's coming Lots from a torque. torque machine. Wait, 335D? Oh. Yeah, he's coming from a torque machine, and it's just like... How many years and miles in that car? Just keep that car. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think know. It's a diesel, man. But, um, it's going to drive forever, Gabe. <laughs> it's going to go forever, but well, I mean, it's a it's a torque machine. And, fuel. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the corn fuel. The corn. Um, another story. The corn. Yeah. So, and, I don't know. You're going to have to drive it, Andrew. I'm going to say drive it, but I'm going to also go again with Todd. You're going to end up wanting this. If you really want a car that's going to be truly a hoot to drive, yeah, it, yeah. So get the F car, get the S. You can find those in a manual, and if you can't, widen your scope. Well, and I think you're going to have more room in the F57. Also, it's a little bit bigger, and especially yeah. if you're getting a uh, a child seat in and out of the back, or even a, a small child in and out of the back, it's going to be a lot easier in the the latest the F57 than it is the R57, and that's just from you know, experience working on these cars and getting in and out of them and stuff like that. So, you know, I, you I think it's a winning combination, spending a little bit more money, even if you order it, get yourself the, the 57 convertible and you'll be happy. You, you, you won't, I don't think you can go wrong by doing that. There you go. Done and done. If you have a question for us here underneath the white roof, if you have a question for our man, Chad, and I know a lot of you do just send those over to us. Feedback, white roof radio.com. We'll get them answered next show. I promise. See, look at that. Somebody said, hey, you don't answer emails. I said, you guys don't send emails. Somebody sent an email. Look what we did. We answered an email. It's like we've been doing this for 16 years or something. I don't know. Gabe, thanks for joining us tonight. We do appreciate it. We know you have early flight this morning. But we do appreciate that. It is White Roof Radio. You think about for your Mini Cooper podcasting needs. <laughs> or or something. You. No, uh, I, I couldn't miss it. It's okay, fun. good. As always. Sorry don't, about the, Mike. I'll, I'll, uh, well, I'll we'll, yeah, we'll get that sorted out. So don't worry. Right. I'll, I'll show you how to open a support ticket. Anyway, I think we're going to go and let Gabe go. Motoringfile.com. Gabe, thanks again. We do appreciate it. We'll talk right. soon. Cheers. Cheers. Have a good whatever this day is. Yes. See you. Bye. First day of fall. <laughs> first day of fall. That's right. Because we've been brought, we've been making podcasts on the first day of fall since 1928. <laughs> no, wait. 1937. 36. <laughs> whatever, dude. It's fine. It's a nice whatever. round number. It's 85 years ago. Okay, there you go. 85 years ago. Done and done. Oh. All right, that's it. We are done for the night. Thanks again, everybody. Appreciate everybody who's uh, filling out the survey. That's been super, 
duper awesome. We're getting up to the numbers that we actually want for our returns on uh, for on the survey. Um, we're going to keep it going for just a couple more weeks. If you haven't yet, I'm going to go and put the link in the show notes again. Just go ahead and touch it through on your uh, podcast app. We know most of you guys are using the Apple podcast app anyway. So just swipe over, get in there. The link's there. Touch it. Go do the thing. Takes like 10 minutes. Not even. We really, really appreciate it. We're getting amazing information and we're getting some great ideas to really make white, kick white roof radio up uh, by a dozen notches for you guys in the very near future. So please, if you haven't taken the survey yet, we'd appreciate it if you could do that sooner than later. And then I'm probably going to pull in about two weeks. Uh, let's see what else. Because one of the things, Chad got this idea basically from the survey is we're going to do this really cool thing next time we get Chad, which is we're just going to talk about like shop talk. Like stuff that he hears in the shop. It's going to be so cool. And we're going to do that. Probably when Chad comes back next time. So watch out for that. All right? Yeah. See, I told you. We're paying attention. Chad and, I both get, Chad and I both get to do that because we deal with many customers on a daily basis. Or Exactly. And I'm just going to sit here and be quiet. And that way people don't want me to not be on the show anymore. And um, by no means, we're not, going to, we're not going to tell bad stories about people or whatever. But we're, we're going to talk about the strange issues. Like, you can't believe what I saw this week. And, and you know, this actually happened. Like a raccoon fell asleep in a guy's car. <laughs> We opened up the we opened up the bonnet to change the oil and holy crap a raccoon jumped out. I mean that that's what yeah. you're gonna get. So <laughs> really, there's right. Ra- you guys are seeing raccoons in Kansas like that, Todd? Dude, mini dealer. Dude, there really? Yeah, there are families of raccoons. I've actually in a car that it was such a smell like they didn't want to bring it inside. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they didn't want to bring really? it into they wouldn't want to bring it into the service department because it smelled so bad a family of raccoons died in this car. <laughs> they thought it was rats, but <clears throat> I think we figured out um no, it was actually a, a a family of small raccoons. Oh, there's a dude on YouTube that does that does uh like barn finds and they find stuff like that. And it's like, no, no, yeah. no, no, just, no. Just no. Uh, just no. Just no. Just no. <laughs> say no to raccoons. And there we have a show title. Yeah. Just say no to raccoons. <laughs> we don't really have a show title. Like that. We were going to we were gonna make this the Boo Show, but we went long talking to Gabe. So you guys don't get the Boo Show because the Boo Show really – It's still coming. To do it right. Yeah. It's still coming. But to do it right, we got to make it a whole show all by itself. And we, we might, be well, kind of a weird thing. We're going to figure out a way to have video for that also. Yeah, we're working on video. I know some of you guys think video would be kind of cool. We're working on that again. We've tried video in the past, uh, but we didn't get a lot of people watching. I think that's probably changed. I think a lot of you guys might want to start watching video now. So we're going to give it a shot. Watch three old white guys talk about Mini Cooper. <laughs> well, because you know what? Most people have smart TVs now, and you can fire. Yeah. YouTube has an app. And then all you got to do yeah. is it, it makes it easy. You know, you're sitting down on the couch, you're chilling. Like, oh, I'm just going to watch Wild Roof Radio and put it on while you're making dinner and it's right there. And so you, you can listen to us, you can watch us or whatever. It's cool. Right. Monday Night Football gets boring. You just flip over to the YouTube channel and you watch us. <laughs> there you go. Done and done. <sighs> Speaking of football, NFL, go cards undefeated so far, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm not talking Mike, about. Mike, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to talk about Kansas City right now. Well, it was home. just, it was, it was a tough week. When you yeah, okay. when you score thirty five points, you should win an NFL game. That's all I'm saying. It's, that was a rough. It was a rough. It was yeah. a rough week. You're right. Yeah, we got lucky. Anyway, um, but that's it. Survey check. Uh, motoringstripes.com. Don't forget motoringstripes.com. Motoringstripes.com. Don't forget that. You guys have already been over there. You're continuing to go over there anyway. You're just going to click over to motoringstripes.com. That's where you're going to get all the stuff that Todd makes. Right, stickers, grow badges. And guess what? Decals. I think there's still a, hmm. a white roof radio. Uh, discount over there. Is there really? There is, but you're going to have to click through to the show notes to get that discount because I, I don't know what it is don't at the top is. of my head, but it's still active. Okay. So there's a 5% discount. Um, if See, you actually you go. go, you have to go to whiteroofradio.com and look at the show notes, or it'll probably be on your app. You can, I'll, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the show description. Yeah. You can totally scroll fun. whatever your podcast listening device application is. You can scroll through yes. and find that. Got it. Five percent discount. Just use White Radio discount code. It's be in the show notes. Click over there. Make sure you click through, especially for you, our guys. Go to the new products page, and there, remember, you're gonna buy a Mini Cooper decal for your to you know replace the one on your uh, front and front or rear emblem. Tells them to save for like six bucks. You put it on. It's like, oh look, my car's a Mini again because it's completely faded and gone away. Yep. Right. Done and done. Bumper protection strip. You need that. Just go. Just get it ordered and get it taken care of. Also, make sure you've got motoring badges, motoring stripes. You make sure you've got it bookmarked because for MPTS 2022, you know Todd's doing the graphics anyway. <laughs> Come on. Duh. 
the, the, he he's done the graphics for like all of the mini takes of states, haven't you, Todd? Yeah, just about since uh, pretty much since two thousand six. Since six. Since two thousand six. Yeah, since two thousand six. The original right, 2006 which was 2006 that you you didn't do the official. We had one, a bad so. no. We had a badge that year. We we had a, a mini Texas States badge that year. Quill badge and as That's we do right. every That's year, right. as we do every yeah, year. Yeah, but but you were the official provider of well, you were the official manufacturer of the graphics, the the stickers and whatnot for all the rest of them after that. Mostly, so, yeah, yeah. For the yeah. for the for, for a lot of the uh, used cars in the event, yes, I made some official stickers. See, there you go. Yep. Just pay attention. Motorstripes.com. Todd knows what he's doing. And all the stuff, all the all, all of Todd's stickers also um, are Nürburgring tested and car wash approved. <laughs> yes, they are. Honestly, like the I had the white refrigerator standard delete kit on my R50 for years. I worked for car wash for five years. Car wash company. My car went through the car wash tunnel three times a week with two different versions of the white refrigerator standard delete kit. And the first one was had ink on it. It didn't last as long as the plain white one. Plain white one that lasted until that car was sold off at three hundred six thousand miles. Mm-hmm. Amazing stuff. And then, of course, all of Todd's graphics saying motoring badges have actually been tested on the Nurburgring at over one hundred and fifty miles an hour. They actually Good have. Stuff. That's not just a. That is not. I'm, just, I'm not actually yes. making that up. That's actually like legitimate. Has actually done. Yeah, our, our, was that our, our friend Axel. Our good that, right? man Axel did that. That's on right. The Nurburgring course. Yeah. Uh, very cool stuff. Very cool. Anyway, motoringbadges.com because, you know, Blink is boring. Yep. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Thanks for sticking around this long. We do appreciate it. But this is the part of the show where I like to make the funny clicking sound and be done. And then I say, questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and click back over to whiteroofradio.com. There you can leave us a note in the show notes. You can also email us. Feedback at whiteroofradio.com. But until next time, gang, this is DB. I'm done. Cheers. Cheers.